Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Explainio Video Creator Basic Training hosted by yours truly, DJ Rico, Rick Neal of ProSidePacks.com. Today, what we're going to do is show you how to get into a animated slide. I know you have a bunch of them that you collected from the monthly programs or got from people like myself. So now we're gonna show you how to load those up and modify them so you can get your projects done in the next video. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Today, as you can see, we're gonna be talking about loading slides and for some that didn't get the uh, intro video. These videos are basic 101 type videos just to help you get into the software, learn how to do some things. Advanced courses and intermediate courses are coming soon. Thank you. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a um, new project. So Okay, so now we have a project. We need to create a scene, so we're going to create a new scene. Now we're back here on the canvas, right? We all know how to get here and do this. Okay, so you have a bunch of slides, and you want to open one of them so you can customize it and, um, you know, get a project out for a customer or do something for a relative or something for your local Moose Lodge or American Legion, which is why I end up doing a lot of. You just click this button right down here. It says Add Animation or Slide. Now the window that comes up, this allows you to add a standard slide like you're normally used to doing. This over here allows you to load SWFs. So if you're if you're one of the people that visit the um, Facebook forum, you know there's been a lot of SWFs been passed around back and forth that do different types of animation from character to some of the animated backgrounds, asteroids, and fireworks that I gave out earlier, and stuff that Scott and others have done. This is where you load them here. Today, we're talking about slides. So for all your slides that you get monthly and everything else, <clears throat> this is where they live. So let's go in here and see. Here's the standard uh, box that you're normally used to seeing if you're an old 1.0 sourdough uh, explain to your user. If not, this is the, um, the folders inside of the slides folder in the uh, explain to your program directory so if you looked in that directory you'd see folders with these names this will be the name of the folder okay so then when you click on one of these folders then you see the list of slides within and you get the preview of the slide so and we all know and love these right so these are i'm going to use one of these since we all have them and that way we can keep the displays consistent. So we're gonna add this as a single. Now, yes, there used to be a button where you can load the whole pack. That button is coming back, so please be patient. Now, once, once you have the, um, the slide loaded, now let me go back again and show you what's happening here, because this is an extra step that you didn't normally get before if you're uh, not new. To explain to you if you are new then just follow along please but open up the slide so we're going to go down here to um where is that one businesswoman let's try her we've seen her okay so now when you load the slide you came to this window it says animated movie to canvas here's what you can do here First, this is where you can sketch. If you don't want to sketch, you click the Don't Sketch button, and it'll stay clicked throughout. And then if you want to, want to sketch, then you can um, turn this on. Here's a problem. If you sketch this slide the way it is right now, the, there will be nothing to sketch because there's no character on the screen, and it's not going to sketch the back. Well, I mean, it could sketch the background, but what's the point? right so in a case like this if you wanted to just have her come in early and sketch her and then continue from that point then you can advance the frames using these buttons here so let's see what it takes to get her out here okay now 
I can have this come on screen and sketch her, then the animation starts. So let's see what we got. So now what I've done is I've loaded the slide. We're in the work canvas area. And if you've heard us talk about nested animations before, this whole body is an SWF. The nested animation is her eyes blinking by themselves because she should be moving. That animation has stopped because we're in the work canvas. But the nested or internal animation, the eyes, they're continuing to move. Okay, so in here, we can do some tricks. Now, if you have a mouse with a wheel on it, then you can zoom in and out of the screen. This lock locks that just in case you want to resize. And I did say that, yes, you can resize a slide template. For those that are new to explain, you know, this wasn't possible before. The slide opened up at full screen and that was it. Then you just worked within. But now you can actually resize and rotate a slide. You can also animate it. So this doesn't make any sense for this slide, but just to show you that it can be done. I can click on the add animation button and just move it over. So it'll move from this position over in a span of 24 frames. Now I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I'm just trying to show you what's here. So you can play around with it and then come back and look at some of the other lessons. You have a better understanding of what you're looking at and working with. So let's close this. So now look, she, she's being sketched and then move across the screen. The rest of the animation continues. Like I said, my doing that didn't really make any sense for this slide except to show you that it could be done. And if you notice, it's not full screen. See, because I brought it down. So I can actually put another background back here on top of, and then this slide will be on top of that background. Or I can get rid of this background so that whatever I have in the scene will show through. So if I have a couple of slides, they'll all have the same background, even if they're not from the same library, because I can turn the backgrounds off. So you're saying, what are you talking about now? Okay, so go over here to scene, and we go into the gallery, and we're just going to get one of the pictures that we all know and love, right? So that's the background. And see, she sketched on top of the background, but then when the slide came in, you know, everything um, was solid again. Now she's gone. So what if I want her, first of all, let's get rid of the animation. So I'm going to come over here and click. It says remove point. And I'm going to make this pretty much full screen, but leave a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So she comes on sketch and then the background shows up, right? All right. So here's where people get confused. Once you close the canvas, <clears throat> and I mentioned this in another video, you don't have the editing controls that you're normally used to seeing. So you can change the text and change the pictures and everything else. Because we are working in the work canvas, right? The canvas is open. This is where we're working in. It's where we can add different items. When we close the canvas, so you pay attention to what I'm saying. When we close the canvas, the canvas controls are here. So we can add a background video or a picture to the overall scene. This is the scene that's selected right now. So if this scene had multiple frames in it, we could have a background video or picture that's under all of them. Okay, that's what that's what this is seen. SWF, for those that didn't know, all slides as well as the characters are SWFs. The difference is that slides are a specially configured SWF that responds to the Explaindio software and is coded in such a way that allows you to, to manipulate the video and the images and the text and everything else where a standard SWF is generally an animated object and your manipulation is pretty much limited to just making it move or not move at certain points in time, unless you, of course, have the ability to create them yourself. And then still you're working pretty much around the same workflow. Uh, here is where you get into the slides. Okay. So 
this we'll be back here in just a second this is the action before so this is sketching by hand uh, you can have this fade up and and then um, start doing the motion and you notice that she started from the very beginning of her motion instead of just where the uh, sketch is and the action after so that's pretty much standard but what most people are getting confused about when you're out here with the canvas closed and you're looking at these canvas controls and you have a slide selected this scene has a slide then this control becomes active now if I have another scene and I just put some text in it and I put a sketch item in it you see this is what this looks familiar to our old explain the old 1.0 users because this is normally what you would do on a screen it looks like this because this is the sketch looking screen now called the work canvas or canvas for short okay so when the this in these two frames here are in one scene because this black bar divides the scenes each one of these items are part of this one scene and then this slide is occupying this scene the other thing that can be done is I can open a canvas while I'm in the scene where the slide exists and I can add a sketch image over here too so I mean it's not like it's possible so she goes away I can have this house sketch onto the screen and make it look like it's part of the overall so let me close the canvas And there's the house so now if I preview the scene had her fade in there it is right there she opened for business she's worried about her pricing and I have to fix that text so I'll have to do that until she found explain to you the explain to your house so you see how they worked now again I mentioned what if you want to get rid of this purple background so you can have the, the picture background or video background showing can you do that well yes sir yes ma'am come back over here and click on the frame in the scene that has a slide in it and when you're on that slide tab customize this animation shows up <clears throat> excuse me so when you come in here you see all of the controls that you know and love all the text controls, the images, um, video, animation, and the outline. Uh, so everything is here. Now, anybody who knows knows that the um, this background here is normally the first outline. So if you go here to outline, turn this off, and voila. Let's restart this again. Yep, and she's on top of the picture. So let's see, let me turn this down a little bit. It says 70, I'm not sure. Let's go to 60. And then tap on it again. Yep, that cleared it up. But as you can see, she's sitting on top of the background. This could be a video going on back here. So, and notice that when you're in here and you're doing something, and you click onto one of these frames up here it's the same as clicking on this close button you end up going out of the slide panel so you can see the action because the work canvas is where all the action is and you know how to use the scene preview you can know how to save this particular scene which would be everything connected together once you see this black bar this is the end of one scene and the beginning of another it's also where you put the transitions that will be coming up in another video now the point of this remember is just to show you how to get in and out and
and around in the interface. We're clicked on the house. Under slide, you don't see that customize this animation. Over here on the text, you don't see it either, or this SVG. When you clicked over here on a frame with a slide in it, then you see the customize this animation. When you click on that, then you can come in here and see all the text fields and the image fields and the video and, you know, all the normal stuff you're used to seeing is right in here. And you can close this button if you want to to get back out. If you need to go to the scene, you want to change the background picture or maybe we'll just add a video. And see where the videos are. <coughs> There'll be one right here. Now let's take a look. See how it looks? Really nice. Let's take a preview. <coughs> so that looks pretty good, huh? Right on top of the video. So it, it's not really hard to use. It's just knowing where to go to find the stuff. Now you see we went to another scene. This scene doesn't have a background video. That's why it's white. Okay. So now if you look back here, see this is a new scene. See if I go into the scene tab, under this scene there is a video in there. But under this scene there's no video or picture. So I can browse again and find another video and let's preview this again so you, you look at the background video now the slide pops up and it does this thing now there's there's a, a way to stack the slides if you had that slide there and you wanted to run a lower third under her to identify her you would save that scene as a video and then bring the video back in as the background and then run the um, the lower third over her okay that and so I'm going to show you that trick and that'll be the last thing I do for this video and then we'll come back with some other stuff so right now what we're going to do is we're going to render this scene first let me I want the house to be out of the way at the end of the video as well so one of the new things in 11 is erase by hand so i'm going to make the erase happen in uh, a little more than half a second so it draws it on there and then it erases it not bad huh so let me make it stay on there just a little bit longer so pause it after action for one second so you can take a look at it and then it erases it off the screen nice all right so let me render this to a video so I'm gonna pause this video and then I'll bring it back in and show you how you can put a lower third over her alright hold on alright and like magic the export is complete in just one second to you a lot longer for me so what I'm gonna do is just close this up okay so remember that this scene here I just rendered it to a video so it's going to play this scene with her coming out. It's going to do the house and it's going to erase. That's the end of the scene that I rendered. The other part of it I did not render. So and then we're going to see how I can put a lower third under her while she's out there on the screen. Okay, so that's the part I just rendered. So we're going to create a new scene. Okay. Now, remember I said that you have to have something out there on the scene before you close it or you, the scene won't create. And I can't put the background video in there unless I close it. So, let's go in here and load the slide that's going to be the lower third. And see which one I'm going to get. Eh, that looks pretty, pretty good. Yeah, well, that's not, that's way over, she's on the corner there, so. Let 
Let's see. I don't want to take too much time. Go with one of these back here. Okay, so I'll use that one. Don't want to sketch this, just want to put it on the screen. See, because it's a slide, it comes in full screen. All right, so let me close the canvas. Now, and see the scene popped up in the melodies too. So you can still drag scenes to, to reorder them around to, in case of, you know, whatever your need or use is. So now that I'm out here, I need to click on the scene tab and add that video I just rendered as the background so I can use it to work on top of. So let's go in here. And this video is getting long, longer than I thought it would be. But sorry, I just wanted to show you how this works. Export. Get this out of there. Okay, I found it here. Open it up. Okay, now here's the problem again with these. See, normally the lower thirds <clears throat> would have a background because when you go into the slides and customize them, you would be changing the background color. You'd be putting images in there or video. And I think there is some movement with that. But in this particular case, you want the lower third to fly on top of the background video. And so what do you do with that? You come over to the outline tab and knock the background out. So now when we play this, the lower third is a little early. So one way to solve that problem is remember I said that the slides are SWS, right? So I'm gonna set a pause at frame one for, let's do it for 48, that's two seconds. And let's see what my timing looks like now. Still ahead. So let's do it for a longer period of time. Let's go to 92. Okay, now that's too long. So let me come down to 76. There we go. That's pretty good timing right there. So what I did, this is a video that I put the lower third on top of, knocked out its background, and came under the SWF tab and delayed it. See, I just paused it at frame two. It really didn't matter as long as I was before the frames where it popped out on the screen. And I held it there for 76 frames. And then that was enough to give the girl a chance to come out and then it fly out so they time together. So I, I, I still have the ability to go under slides, go under text, you know, and change the text that was there and the crawl that was at the top of the screen at the bottom. So that's not an issue, it's just that all those things will start um, 76 frames in. You know, so it'll stop, it'll, it'll stop at frame two of its own animation, wait for 76 frames to pass by to give the girl a chance to come out, then it will start running again and complete its path with the addition of 239 frames it has in its run so let me show you this one more time that i'm out of here on this particular video and we'll come back again and talk about videos themselves and uh, we'll have an advanced course on uh, how to do all this stuff you see there's text the text crawlers here and there's text up at the top here so just to be fair let me go back in here to slide and that text at the top which is too hard to read so let's make it readable
And let's look at it one more time. So it's delaying 76 frames. It comes out. There's text up here. You see we got a crawl at the bottom. And that's laying on top of a video, which is the, the scene that uh, we just rendered. So hopefully that's clear as mud. Watch this video again. This video is all about just opening up the slides and playing around with slides. Uh, the the video is going to be sectioned off like this so you can just study the part of Explainio that you need to know. And that can be of the most help to you. And uh, this just is bugging me up here. So I need to change this to a fatter font. There we go. You can't even see the movement. So one more again, and then I am out of here. The text flies in from the top. We got text crawling at the bottom. All this is part of the lower thirds package. This is the Arctic lower thirds package that should be out or coming out soon, depending on when this video is, is viewed. In any case, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And that is how to load slides, add text, video, and images in Explain Dio using animated slides. See you next video.